conference in uh, April in Japan, but no one wants to come. Um, so the title of this talk is Max Heads slash Max Grace. Uh, the reason for this is, uh, is basically we originally called it Max Heads, put it on our archive, but then the reviewers thought that Max Grace was a better word for it. So in AI stats it will turn out as Max Grace, but if you want to find out the um, Find the archive version, type Max Heads. <laughs> okay, so this is joint work with Fabio Vitale, Kevin Chan, Mark Kerbster, and Xi Shan Wang. Okay, so the problems which we're going to solve in this paper um, are all instances of a hedge problem. So, what is a hedge problem? So, a hedge problem is a game between learner and nature. Okay, and we have a set, of, we have a set A actions. Okay, so learning proceeds in trial. Trial 1, trial 2, trial 3, going on. So on every trial T, nature chooses some fact function, LT, that maps the actions into numbers. Okay, so this is the profit from selecting an action A at time T will be L LTA. Okay, and this, uh, this uh, function LT comes from some set of possible functions. The nature is free to choose it. Okay, but nature doesn't tell the learner yet what this function is. Then the learner has to choose an action, some action, A, C, in a possibly a randomized way. And once it's uh, chosen this action, um, uh, the, the function, the profit function, is revealed to the learner, and the learner incurs a, a profit of LT, AT. Okay, so that's a profit function, LT, uh, that nature chose, and the action that the learner chose. That's a profit. Um, so the goal is to have a large expected cumulative profit. Expected because we're choosing the actions in a randomized way. And basically, we want this cumulative profit to be almost as good as the best fixed action in retrospect. So we want it to be, so after all the training is done, you can, you can see all the loss functions. So you could find, okay, this is the best fixed action. If I was to play this action A on every single trial, okay, I would get some kind of profit. So the best fixed action is the one which will maximize that total cumulative profit. So we want to, we want to have uh, to be almost as much a profit as if we'd have known the best fixed action in retrospect and always play for that action. So this is the hedge setting, very famous setting in online machine learning. So, I'm gonna, so we have, for our algorithm Max Grace, our Max Grace, uh, the algorithm Max Grace solves the general problem, uh, which has three different special cases, which are, I will now describe the problems which three different ca special cases are. Okay, so, the first one is uh, online learning version of a facility location problem. Okay, so what happens in the facility location problem? We have n sites, okay, so the, these sites are just locations, okay. So in every trial, if you recall from head setting, we, we run in trials, okay. So in every trial, we need to choose which sites we want to open a facility at, okay. And opening a facility on site I costs us, at time T, uh, on trial T, costs us CIT dollars. Uh, okay, so after we've opened our facility, after we've opened the facilities, uh, a user requests the use of the facility. Okay. Oh no, what's happening? Yeah, there you go. All right. After opening a facility, uh, after we've opened all our facilities, the user will request the use of the facility, okay? But it will prefer the facility to be nearer to it than uh, further away from it. So depending on how far away that nearest facility is, the user is going to pay uh, a different amount of value. Okay, so the, if the closest facility is on site I, and the user will pay us RIT dollars. 
Okay, so how is this hedge? Okay, well, the set of possible actions is a set of possible subsets of sites in which place a facility. Okay, so X here is a subset of the sites. It basically says we're going to place a facility on these sites. So uh, this P here is a power set. So our action space is a set of all subsets. N, and by the way, N is the sites themselves. Okay, so it's a set of all subsets of sites. Okay, and what's the profit? Okay, so recall X is a subset of sites you place the facility on. The profit is uh, the reward you get. Okay, so you're maximizing over all the sites which have facility on it, you're maximizing the reward given if that site was the closest to the user. Okay, so this is literally how much the user gives you as a reward. And then minus the cost of opening the facilities. So this is our profit function for the uh, specific location problem. Okay, we also, uh, I, 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 I just say that as far as we know, um, the, all three of these special problems, we are the first people to be able to uh, do these problems uh, with the gamma people's cost. Um, okay, so the online knapsack media problem. Okay, so here we have a set of uh, N items, okay? They're things. And each item has a weight of, uh, of ZI kilograms, okay? And we have a knapsack. Well, I think in England we we'll call it a box sack, right? But we have a knapsack. And that knapsack can carry a total weight of uh, one kilogram. So, on, uh, on trial C, we place items in the knapsack so that we don't go over weight limits of one kilogram. Okay, after we fill the knapsack, a user will then purchase his favorite item from it, okay? And then it will pay us more for an item, but it prefers more. Okay, so if it's the user's favorite item is item nine, it will pay us our IT dollars, if it's on priority, if the user has priority. Okay, so what's our action space? Um, our action space here is, as usual, these are subsets of uh, all the possible sites here, but we also have the condition that they fit into the knapsack. So this is basically saying the sum of weights in the knapsack is less than one. Okay, so that's our action space now, and our profit we get is simply the amount of money we get from the favorite item of the user. So it's max, the maximum of the user. Okay, one more problem. The online zero one knapsack problem. Okay, in this case, we have the same thing as a knapsack media problem. Okay, the only difference is that instead of the user buying its favorite item, it buys all the items. Okay, mm -hmm. so again, we have the same action space, but now the loss is the sum of the values of the item. Okay, where CTI is a value. Okay, so those are our three motivating problems. So we make an overall framework which can handle all these three uh, problems. So I can ask you a quick question. Yeah. On the first problem, uh, the reward uh, for the location, is mm. it uh, the maximum uh, because the uh, user will go to the closest facility? Yeah, and it and pays the closest... more money for a closer facility. So, so from the point of view of the user, it will pay more just because it's closer, no? Uh, yes. So yeah. we'll it doesn't matter how, uh, how convenient it is to go far away, the user will never go far away. We'll always go to the, it will always go to the, closest to the most expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just okay. basically, it's like we're going to use a, yeah, we're going to, we have some like service in the cloud, and yeah, the user will always want to uh, go to the nearest facility. Okay. Uh, but in general, this is a classic problem where you uh, you basically have these end sites, you open facilities, but in the in the in a, a normal classical problem, you have all the users given to you, and you have sure. to find out which sites to place the uh, 
as in the normal classical problem, but the thing is here is online. Yeah, yeah. So we're learning as they're coming. Yeah, they, they always, yeah, they always pay, they always go to the closest facility. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, why do we need max grace? Okay. So, in all the above problems, um, the action sets is a set of subsets. Uh, so it's exponential in the number of uh, uh, sides or items or whatever it is. Um, this means a standard hedge algorithm, because there is a standard algorithm for solving a hedge problem. It will take exponential time per trial, completely infeasible. So we're going to make an algorithm that doesn't perform as well as a standard hedge algorithm, but it's, uh, it's basically linear time per trial. Um, and we still give theoretical guarantees showing that this is a very good algorithm, albeit not quite as good as a hedge, but the hedge is completely intractable. So, what's our general problem? Okay, so now I'm going to talk about servers and services. So basically, servers are what we're calling sites in the facility location and items in the knapsack problems. Okay, so these are, uh, these are the servers. And we're going to talk about placing a service on the server. So in the facility location, that's opening a site. In the, uh, in the knapsack problems, that's placing an item into the knapsack. Okay, so, so we have a set of end servers. Okay, learning proceeds in trials, yeah, as always. Okay, and on every trial T, we choose a set of servers in which to place a service. Okay, placing the service on the server I on trial T costs us C I T uh, dollars. Okay, that's a that's the amount we have to pay to place the service on server I. So every server we place the service on, we have to pay a price for it. So this is the total cost of the service placement here. And C T may be revealed before we uh, the costs may be revealed before we place the services, but it's not actually necessary. The cost could be uh, given after, and the algorithm achieves the same performance. Okay, so no, the cost change from trial to trial. And on any trial, placing a service on some server requires a certain energy zi. Okay, so uh, the zi is really representing weights of items in knapsacks. Okay, so the total energy can't exceed one. Basically, saying the same thing as the total weight of of the items in the knapsack is more than one kilogram. Okay, so okay, so on trial T, a user requires the use of the service. Okay, so we can look at it as we have this cloud network. Um, a user will say, "Yeah, I want to. I, I want to send my data to some application. Okay, such that." Um, I want to send my data to an application for processing and then get it back. But I want it to be done fast. And the faster you can do it, the higher the reward the user is going to pay for you. Okay, so if the nearest copy of a service, um, i.e., you know, we place a service on multiple servers, if the nearest copy of a service is a server I, then the user will reward us with RTI. And RTI is only revealed after we place the service. Is we've done our service placement. Okay, so the profit of trial T is a reward minus the costs. Okay, um, and the goal is to approximately maximize the cumulative profit. Okay, okay so our special cases that we have at the beginning are facility location problem. Okay, the energy is equal to zero. So that means we don't have the NAPS action script. Mm. The costs are greater than equal to. NAPS act medium problem, the costs are equal to zero. Okay, we only have the energies and the rewards. Okay, i.e. The, the weights of the items in the NAPS act and the rewards given to the user for its paper. Zero one NAPS act problem, um, the rewards are all zero, but the costs are negative. Yeah, we're, getting a reward, we're getting a reward for every item instead of uh, instead of having to pay for that. Okay, so now I'm going to go, yeah, now we're going to talk about performance of Max Hedge. Okay, so this weird thing here is, uh, if I give you a set S, 
So this should be a function of s, okay? If I give you some set s, okay, then this thing here, which is called the, uh, the we call it the gamma, uh, the gamma discounted profit, okay? It's basically the profit that you get uh, on a trial t, okay, so t and gamma, and there's meant to be an s here. It's a profit of train at trial t, if we were to place the service on the servers in S, and all the rewards are negative costs were multiplied by gamma. Okay, so that means if we place we place a service on the servers in uh, the, the set S, okay, and then you were to multiply all the rewards with negative costs by gamma, then you get a gamma discounted profit. Okay. We define these quantities. Firstly, we, uh, for simplicity, although in our um, AI stats paper we will explain how to uh, have it with p2 is equal to 1, uh, but we are assuming p2 is lower than 1, okay, which is a maximum energy, okay, um, for simplicity. But we can handle the case when p2 is equal to 1. Uh, that's not in the archive version, but it will be in the AI stats version. So we also have delta. Okay, which is equal to this, and alpha equal to this, but these are just, uh, you don't need to remember them. Okay, also we have these definitions, the maximum reward equals the maximum of the cost, they're just values in the, in the total cumulative profit. Okay, so this basically says, given any uh, set, which is the same thing I was talking about before, a best fixed action. Okay, so the best fixed action is the best thing if we were to play the same set of services over, same set of servers over on every single time. Okay, then uh, the total cumulative profit of max hedge of max hedge is this. It's kind of like the alpha over delta discounted profit multiplied by delta uh, plus a regret term, which uh, capital T is the number of trials. So this regret grows uh, that zero regret. It, it tends to zero when when you divide it by t as t tends to infinity. And this is basically how far off we are from the optimum. See, if we were to apply hedge, uh, we would have, we'd essentially have this, but this would be better if we were to do the, ex the exponential time hedge algorithm. Okay, okay, so now I'm going to go into the mechanics of the algorithm. Okay, so we define this complex set. Okay, so that's a set of x in 0, 1 to the n in the box, okay, such that x dot with z, remember z is the energy, okay, so z is the vector over the uh, servers. Uh, each, each server is a component of the vector. Um, so that dot with x has to be less than or equal to 1, okay. So this is our convex set uh, that we're going to yeah. Uh, play our game in. Um, so yeah, we maintain the vector uh, omega t, okay, in this set, okay, which guides the randomized construction of x t. Remember, x t is a set of servers we place a service on. Okay, so we're going to randomly place a service, but we're going to, but it is an element of randomization in placing placing a service. But it's not like we, uh, yeah. It's an element of randomization. Okay, so what I mean, what does this omega t do? So as I said, the, the omega t guides the, random, the randomization, no, the randomized algorithm of selecting x t. Okay, there's a lot of definitions here, and this is essentially the algorithm that constructs x t to omega t. I'm not going to go into details because it's slightly complex, but we have three properties uh, which uh, which come out from this uh, this uh, this uh, randomized generation. So those three properties are x t satisfies these two three properties. So the total energy of all actions selected. Oh, so action. Okay, sorry. When like action is the same as server now. Like, I'm sorry, I, I missed out. But I started calling it actions here. So the total energy of all the servers is not greater than one. Okay, so all the servers we've selected to place a service on, 
Okay, the total energy is not greater than one. That has to be the case, right? That's an abstract constraint. Like, it's got to satisfy that. So it's important that it satisfies that. Um, and then we have two other properties. If I give you an arbitrary set of servers, okay, then the probability that your service you find, okay, intersects with the arbitrary set is lower bounded by this function here, okay? Or these are the omegas. And one more crucial uh, thing, uh, if I give you a, a server i, and the probability that it's selected on tile t is not bounded by this, okay? So these three properties are just, well, I'm not gonna go into how the algorithm works, but these three properties are, are essential in proving our, in the, yeah, in our, in the work, in the algorithm. Okay, so what our algorithm is gonna do is it's gonna, basically it works by bounding the uh, expected reward with a convex function, concave function. Okay, so how do we bound it? Okay, so, so on trial T, we order the servers. Okay, so this is an ordering of the servers. So this is server sigma T1, server sigma T2, server sigma T n. Okay, so that means, so server sigma T i is the i uh, server in the ordering um, at trial, at, on trial T. Okay, and this order is such that it's the order of the increasing or decreasing uh, order of order of decreasing reward, okay? So you order them in order of decreasing reward. Uh, that's positive near time, okay? So it's safe, time-wise, okay? Uh, we also define this just for convenience, but forget about that. But then we define a function f to be, so fj, so j is between one and n, so fj of t is this, the reward of the j node in the ordering minus the reward of a j plus one node in the ordering multiplied by one minus x of, oh yeah, this is a function of gamma, one minus x of the sum of the, uh, of the gammas of, the, of this indice of the gamma. Okay, so gamma is a vector. So this is the this is the gamma is the element of C. This is a function on gamma. Okay, uh, this is a concave function. Okay, so that's great. Okay. Okay, now we're going to bound the reward. We're going to yeah carry on bounding the expected reward with a concave function. So we had this was one of our properties that came from the uh, from the service placing algorithm, yeah? This one of the properties I gave before. Okay, so we want to, this is what you want to bound, yeah? The profit, no, the reward. You want to bound, bound the reward. Okay, we can show that this reward is equal to this, okay, where i is the indicator function. Okay, this is basically saying, this indicating function is saying, okay, does there exist, if I give you the jth node in the ordering of the nodes on that trial that we created on overleaf, okay? And if I pick k le less than that, no, there, there exists a k in, in, before it in the ordering, which is an element of x2, okay? And that's the indicator value of that, okay? You sum them up, multiply it by this, and that actually gives you the maximum reward. Okay, this means the expected maximum reward by the uh, linearity of expectation, okay, and the fact that indicators turn into probabilities when you take the expectation, I can say the expected value is this, okay. So plugging in this, I get this, okay. So we've we've bounded the expected reward by a concave function, okay, because each of the functions in here is concave. So it's con that concave function. The expected reward is that convex function on omega two. Okay, these are convex on the on the set C uh, because of the sum of convex functions. Okay, so sorry, concave, concave. 
Okay, so we found these expectable form k function. Okay, we can bound the expected cost with a linear function, which uh, this thing uh, uh, requires two other properties that we uh, said about the, the uh, algorithm that does the placement. Um, this is easy, it's just a linear function, so it, it's, it's easy. Um, so we want to bound the expected profit with a concave function, okay, which is just, this is a reward we did before, yeah, this is a reward, this is the, uh, the cost, <coughs> this is a linear function, or bound, a bound on the cost, okay, which would be immediately overleaf, which doesn't go into details because it's just a linear function. Um, and then we, this is HD gamma, okay, so by what we've done over leaf, the expected profit on the trial T is bounded below by HD gamma, which is concave. HD gamma is a positive sum of concave functions, and hence it itself is both concave. So now we've made a concave function which will bound uh, the expected uh, profit on the trial given XT. I give you, uh, the expectation is over the, I give you XT, okay, this with a randomized process, no, no, sorry, I give you omega, <laughs> randomized process makes the XT, so the expectation of the uh, uh, profit from that XT, okay, is bounded below by HT, which is concave. Bounded from below or uh, from above? Yeah, but, uh, hang on. Expected, expected profit is at least this. Yeah. At least this. Below. Okay, that, that's yeah, what I was we're saying. Okay. We're saying it's more. To, we want to try to do the most. Exactly. So okay, okay. So I was confused by that. That's yeah. okay. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I'm basically almost finished. Aren't I? So, online gradient, is, we're going to use online gradient ascent um, because the gradient, okay, can be computed in quasi-linear time, okay? The projection of a vector onto C, if I give you a vector omega, like, which isn't in C, to do uh, 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 online gradient descent, we have to be able to project it into the set C. We have to be able to project an arbitrary vector into C. We can do that in quasi-linear time as well. So the details of these are in the paper. So that means we can use gradient ascent, which takes quasi-linear time per trial, and that's it, I think. And then, so, the, oh yeah, so this is on my gradient ascent, ascent. So learner will play a vector w t and c, okay, that's the w, the omega, sorry, omega t, that's the omega with, uh, that's the, the omega t is the omega, um, that, you know, we scored trial to trial, right? So a weight vector. And then uh, the learner will update. So na nature reveals HT to the learner, which is uh, after the learner's played it. So basically, the learner plays omega T. By playing omega T, it means it does that service placement algorithm from omega T. That's what that means. Then nature reveals. HT to learner. Well, nature doesn't reveal HT, nature reveals the, in, in our case, nature reveals the, um, uh, the actual uh, uh, profit, um, the actual cost and rewards, okay? Um, but, but in doing so, it doesn't reveal HT, okay? Because we can, we can find this uh, concave function, HT, from the rewards and the, uh, and the costs, okay? So then learner will incur this loss, okay? Uh, I'm mixing up gradient descent with ascent on the top. Sorry, we originally wrote a paper with gradient descent on negative values, but it looks much nicer with mm -hmm. gradient ascent, so it's simply a minus. So learner gains uh, ht omega t, so mm -hmm. minus and that should be gained. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, so that's basically saying gain at least, okay? Gain the least bit, right? And then the learner updates its omega t by doing the projection by firstly adding eta t. Actually, eta t is a, a 
and learning, right? Um, you'll have to see the paper because it's quite slightly complex, like. But um, but yeah, but each to the learn, right? Uh, with changes in trial to trial, uh, we define or we, at least we compute it in the paper. Um, and so I, this here is a gradient of ht, which is the concave function of omega t. So I take the gradient at omega t, multiplied by the learning rate, and perhaps the covered omega t, and then project into c. So that's called the linear time. That's it. Done, I think. And so, how long wants me to suggest like how this could be through networks? But the, <laughs> originally, when I started this research, it was all about networks, right? It's about trying to place like uh, you know services on servers in, in the cloud, so that uh, you know I can access, I can I can use applications quickly and stuff like. So it was networks that inspired me to do this, but the networks have all been abstracted out. But, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, any questions? <laughs> We do have time for questions. So I do have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working with a student on uh, like the an Egypt based model for drivers, uh, okay. taxi drivers okay. um, in cities yeah. uh, based on the demand of passengers. Yeah. Uh, and it made me think about your model, but I'm not sure. Do you need uh, to place for a taxi driver? Yes, I mean, they have, to, they have to opti optimally yeah. decide. Yeah, where yeah. to go and if to whether to move after dropping yes, a passenger. Yeah, yeah, this is very um, relevant. Like, so I was uh, just trying to understand, yeah, whether uh, the algorithm could be. This is really right. I mean, that's a specific you know, phase problem itself, or or it could be. Yeah, you can do that like, depending on how it is. You could either look at it as a facility location or maybe a, mm -hmm. a knapsack medium, um, and then um, because yeah, you want to be able to serve. A user's only going to be happy if he's served by a taxi within a certain radius. Or yeah, yeah. But so maybe in, for, perhaps the waiting time would be less. Yeah. yeah, you've got to basically try and minimize the waiting time, or mm -hmm. like at least. Well, this is actually because there is a subtle difference actually when with the basically the uh, so the way we phrase facility location problem and knapsack medium problem in this is uh, maximizing the reward, whereas uh, classically the problems are minimizing the loss, which does result in a slightly different thing. So this is only really working when you maximize the reward. But in this case, okay. it's fine because you're gonna you kind of want like like so the original facility location problem basically it's um, you, you pay a cost for having to go out to get the if you're a driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this would be like, you know, the, the user would be like, okay, I, I want to drive, but I'm only really happy with this service if I get a driver within a certain amount of time. Yeah. Um, and then this turns into a, a maximizing reward problem, like, because the reward is the happiness. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a like completely abstracted happiness, right? And then after you've done your taxi journey, the reward. User can be like, okay, I'm happy about this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, like it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely really relevant to that. That could book it. Yeah, or like placing emergency. One of our actually, like, the actually, the thing that triggered this off, um, we were discussing because we had this data set. One of my colleagues had like a data set on like emergency services and call out for emergency services, so then I kind of made the idea to, um, and then it kind of grew from there a bit. So yeah, originally it was an apps like medium, medium I think, but we, uh, or even like a, a more like K medium, like we had X number of services of, of uh, police service. So we got to kind of position these police in such a way that they can get, they can get to the next I mean, yeah, there is another example. There is actually like loads of different examples that this would work well mm -hmm. for. Like, so yeah, placing uh, placing policemen around so that you can get 
okay, so the next pattern as quick as possible mm -hmm. is uh, um, and it's when it's online, I mean, you know, you have to be learning as you go, so. But yeah, definitely, definitely really bad about you, definitely. Thank you. Any questions? Is that it? Yeah, in case there are like, no questions. Yeah, so I mean, I've kind of got yeah. a bit of a meeting anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, we should go. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay. Is the code available, by the way? Huh? Is the code for, for the paper available? Uh, the code? Yes, is there some code? Uh, or it's just a, it's the proof? Uh, yeah, it's just the proof. No, we haven't coded it up anything. OK, OK, so OK, we're sorry. Going to, uh, we're, uh, we will do if we make a journal version of it. I'm sorry? We will do if we make a journal version. We'll, we'll code up the algorithm. Great, yeah, let us know. Yeah, we'll do. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.